All right. I am Aaron Heiser of Silverback Customs, and um, I wanted to do a quick video uh, showing a few things with Adobe Illustrator, designing your own patterns and stuff for um, for the laser engraver. All right. Um, I am no Adobe Illustrator wizard by any means, but I've been using it a couple of years, and um, I've I've learned enough to get by with what I'm doing here. And I see that there's a lot of people. Uh, and the the lasering community that are struggling with some of the things I've already figured out so thought I would I would help out with that some so what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to start with this knife right here this is a Kershaw leak copper is what it's called real cool knife it uh, has an assisted flip on it has copper handles so it's going to be awesome to engrave to look like the one I showed you just a second ago and um, yeah so the very first thing I do, I've already done here, and I, I take a picture of it. Okay, so I take it, so it'll be flat on my uh, flat on my table, and I take a picture of it, and that way um, I can get a good outline of it. Now, now that I have the picture brought up in Adobe Illustrator, what I have to decide is um, where I'm going to engrave on it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on putting this into essentials because that'll show me what's called my layers. Okay. Now the reason I'll, I'll use a layer is because I can lock this picture in and make it to where no matter what else I do, this picture stays exactly where it is. All right. So I'm going to take and uh, if you see where my 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 little hand is up there, I am going to lock that picture, but I'm also going to double click on it. And I'm going to dim its image to 50%. And that just kind of makes it to where it's a lot easier for me to uh, see what I'm doing on top of that picture as opposed to just on it. Now I'll go back up here to the uh, layers again and I'm going to create myself a new layer. And uh, hit OK. Now I have a new layer and when I do things on this new layer it won't do anything to the, the old layer. It's literally just the backdrop of my computer now so I can do stuff on top of it. Now, um, I do like to use Essentials Classic because I have more choices of what all I can do um, on the same screen. So that's that's why I'm going to go back to it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on part of this uh, part of this knife. And again, I've got to figure out where I want to engrave. Um, I don't like engraving over the screws and things like that because uh, well, it damages the integrity of those items and we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to come up here to this is the curvature tool and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to make sure down here is my fill. I don't want to fill what I'm doing. I just want to draw an outline. So I'm going to put that there's no fill down here and then I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm drawing a line here using that tool. So now I'm going to go up here with my, my curvature and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the outline of this. Okay. Now the curvature tool, I like it because again, you can draw curves. It's not like a, 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 the line tool where you just draw straight lines. Okay. So using the curve tool is usually best for doing this when you're not doing it on something that's flat and straight and then everywhere you click is just going to be a point where the line stands still and then if you you know wiggle off that line it'll kind of adjust the curve before it as well all right um, it, it takes some getting used to but after after you get used to it you can really predict what it's going to do and it's a very useful thing okay now um, some of the problem areas with the curvature tool can be like up in this corner I'm going to zoom in so that I can get several points in a very small area because I don't want that to be a sharp corner. I want it to be kind of like it is on the knife and I want it to be rounded. All right. And then I'm going to continue following the edge of the, uh, the knife. Now the good news is when you do this, um, it will, um, you know, if you've got it zoomed way, way in, then tiny little details will not show once you zoom back out. Now, I'm going to show you something really neat once I, I've gotten to the screw. And what I'm going to do is draw this line around these screws. Because, again, I'm not going to engrave through them. So, I'm going to click once. And then if I click twice, now I've got a solid corner. And I can, and I can draw my circle around it using that. 
as opposed to um, you know doing the the soft curves and things like that so there we go all right so I'm gonna go over here to the second screw and do the exact same thing all right and we're going to do this, um, this will be just part one of a couple of different videos we're going to do on this. Um, once I got to the other side, I did that double click thing again, you know, and that's how I got another sharp corner. But I am going to move that corner just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard, you have to move a corner or move a point way away and then bring it back. Um, because if you, if you only want to move it a tiny bit, the program wants to, um, wants to snap it back to its original position. And I don't want that, I want it to move. Okay, you'll have to excuse the noise behind me. I am in my house and, well, we have house things to do. Um, since there's no screw in this little hole right here, I'm just going to go right on over it and not worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to go down and around and keep on trucking. Here I am at the very end of the knife. We'll start moving it over some. Oop, I never want to move it so far that I can't see the last two points because you don't want to click something and then realize that way behind where you can see on your screen it might have bent it again and uh, made it a different shape than what you were looking for. There we go. To fix that one a little bit. And I'm just going along and I'm just tracing out the outline of that, that handle. That's all I'm doing. This project is actually going to be for somebody. Um, this is a customer's job that we're working on together here. Now, when I get back to the original point here, it's gonna, when I click on that original point, it'll make that curve, but to turn that into the point that I need, again, I'm just gonna double click it, and now it all falls into position, okay? So here we are, I'm gonna zoom out of it a little bit, and you can see I now have a nice tracing of my handle I tried to stay you know kind of the same length away from their distance away from the edges as I went now if we wanted to be boring then we would leave it just like this but we don't want to be boring we want to give it a little something extra so we're also going to do a little bit of engraving on the blade as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow that line right there I'm not sure what that line's called because I'm not a knife maker Now, you see where I have, well, let me go another, um, see where I have this like S-shaped curve right here. I don't like it, so I'm going to double click that and that'll straighten it up a little bit. There we go. Because uh, again, that'll make it to where it's two straight points as opposed to, okay, and then I double click right there at the tip of the blade and I'm going to try to, I'm staying far away from the sharp edge uh, just because I'm not trying to impede this knife's ability to cut anything. Alright. Now, that point, I started a little bit high on it, um, so I'm going to move it way away and then move it back where I want it. Just like that. Okay, so now, um, that's what we've done so far and uh, again I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here and I'm actually going to stop this video right here because I'm not trying to make a five hour long video um, in the next video we're going to take and we're going to fill all these this area um, and it'll look something like that right there uh, those are roses right there and then the the individual's name and stuff like that and then that cut out right there is for the Kershaw etching that's already on the blade and then that cut out is for the screw so um, we're gonna spin right around and start that video in just a minute but I wanted to go ahead and get this one posted again I'm Aaron Heiser of Silverback Customs and uh, thank you very much for watching hope you learned something if you have any input please leave it in the comments Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this. Thanks.